we want to talk about the Middle East, we have to, we, we should not just uh, try to limit our view or understanding of, of the Middle East in the past 10 or 20 years. We have to look at it in the, in the period, in the, in the, at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, where most of the shape of the countries and the shape of the local politics or the current politics has been shaped before by, by, the, by colonialism and uh, imperialism at the same time. The Middle East has been during the 19th century has been under the occupation of uh, the Ottoman Empire uh, during that period after that period after the Ottoman Empire was being bit uh, and bit deteriorating uh, its power deteriorating especially after the first world war where the european european interest grew much bigger inside the middle east the, the interest were at the beginning mainly economical interest because it was and it was very obvious because the West, western countries or the european countries mainly wanted from the ottoman empire to give them special economic interest in the region especially like in syria or in lebanon or in palestine and in iraq and different other areas these economic interests basically shaped the development of what we talk about the modern Middle East. The modern East was created by the recurrent interventions or military, military interventions and economic interventions of the European, European capital into, into these areas. And gi giving examples, for example, Lebanon, the, 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 the build-up of the, of the economy, which, which was before the European intervention was mainly feudal economy. After, after the pumping of the money into, into the economy, it developed into, capital, into a capitalist economy, but it, it was mainly servicing European interests. It wasn't, it wasn't an inner development of, of, of the country to serve the interests of its society or to serve the interests of, the, of growing new classes within, within, within society, but it was serving European economy. The same thing we notice in Syria and the same thing we notice in Palestine and Egypt and in also in the Gulf countries where the British and the other European countries invested mainly in oil and this oil was directly uh, taken taken to the to, to European European cities and uh, in in exchange they gave the tribes that existed there leverage and power and having a kingdom uh, in, in, in in these areas so the build up or the, the the modern shape of the Middle East was shaped by wars and was shaped by uh, by by expanding capitalist uh, interest within uh, European capitalist interest in the, within the Middle East And that, that continued, but it changed radically, especially after the Second World War. After the Second World War, where the European capital retreated a bit, bit, bit from bit from from the Middle East, American capital US came and started replacing it. And during that uh, that period, we have we have one of the main issues with the Middle East, which is the, Palest the Palestinian issues, where the the uh, the, the British the British uh, the, the the British state decided that to give the right for a. For Zionist group to, uh, to 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 initiate a state, a Zionist state in Palestine, uh, uh, push uh, and and a racist state, basically destroying the fabric of uh, Muslim Christians and Jews living together in in historical Palestine and being replaced by 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 uh, by, by a racist state and uh, se segregating between uh, between Jews and uh, Muslims and between Jews and, and, and Christians so what we what what we have to very to, to understand very carefully is that racism did not exist endlessly within the Middle East but it was imported inside to the inside the Middle East and wars were imported inside the Middle East as a result of uh, a, a European capitalist expansion and that and also we don't we should not understand wars in the Middle East as a as a something permanent and historically existing just because people hate each other it's it's actually uh, quite, quite 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 the quite the opposite in the Middle East it has been historically uh, divergent or a mixed area where people from different cultures and different regions used to live to live there and take refuge refuge in in this area uh, running from persecution uh, fr from from their countries of from the lands they were, were there but it was due to the to the to the to the very to the racist view of uh, of uh, of uh, of imperialism and colonialism into the region where they saw each uh, community and religion as a nation by itself and they saw these people cannot be unified under a secular or a, and, 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 and cannot be unified, but they have to 
split this region depending on these things which have created the policy of segregation and policies of, of containment which are also used by these by the by these powers at the same time by the growing national bourgeoisie which were, grew out of the interest out of the capitalist expansion european capitalist expansion basically the the interest of the local le, local rulers are tied to the interest of uh, of imperialism and that's very obvious we see it in the U european and us support to what we what we call the moder moderate arab regimes like uh, like uh, like um, like egypt uh, the, the the saudi arabia and uh, and 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 also the new the new government in iraq and and jordan as well these regimes constitute basically the biggest proof about the inter, about the the, the 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 strong linkage between the interest of the local rulers the, and the interest of uh, of western especially european and american imperialism and the state of israel is also within that context the israeli state also the, the local rulers and yeah, the local israeli rulers are basically linked directly their interests are linked directly with the interests of imperialism especially that the, the, this relation has been shaped by billions and billions of dollars being put into the Israeli state to to guarantee its support and its alliance with uh, with with imperialist power. This this whole this whole uh, this whole phenomena creates basically a a, ba a balance of fear, a constant balance of fear within the region, and is basically a breathing space for continuous wars and uh, c c continuous war in the region, either international international wars or regional wars or even civil co uh, civil uh, civil wars within each country. But because these civil wars are not the result of <coughs> Inner, inner civil hatred or inner civil struggle, but basically what happens is that uh, clashing, uh, clashing international interest and clashing regional interest result on a local level in terms of clashing local, local, local interest. Especially since every every part of imperialism, uh, every uh, governments and every states in terms of imperialism try to uh, attract to it some uh, some regimes and some systems to in, in a line and these when these interests uh, clash against each other the result would be a clash within these regions in terms of like basically people are being used as fuel for sectarian wars for imperialist war only in the interest of enforcing a more uh, a more rigid presence and more stable presence of imperialist of imperialist presence and a Western economic presence within the region, and that that was very obvious, especially during the uh, at, uh, war in Iraq uh, after after 9/11 and war of Afghanistan, which the first thing the Americans did after occupying Iraq is try to subsidize uh, oil oil reserves and try to privatize privatize the, the whole sector and try to gather that oil and push it back into the U.S. and use it. Really? The same thing uh, during the Iraq War, the Americans uh, guaranteed the alliance, uh, the, al uh, the alliance of uh, the Egyptian regime with them to guarantee that the ships, the Aramic American ships, and the American troops could pass through the uh, Suez Canal into into the, into the Middle East. So w w what what we see basically is that the, the everything is being linked together, um, whether economic interest and uh, and uh, military interest. Uh, in the whole region are being linked together and the whole region is basically boiling up and we can see also a lot of social a lot of social movements and uh, workers movement in the Middle East uh, k k standing against these regimes at the same time standing against imperialism which makes it very very important for the people in the Middle East the action of solidarity for 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 uh, like we saw in, in, in the last time during the during the war on Gaza when the, the resilience of the resistance in Gaza and the resilience of the Palestinian people in Gaza pushed and gave heart to thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands around the globe to protest against Israeli aggression in Gaza. Who, the, the war was won in, a, by, in, in terms of politics by the thousands of people who were uh, taking down the streets all over the world. And this is, this is the process of solidarity, that simple solidarity between the different people of the world actually makes makes the, the struggle in the Middle East looks brighter and it gives hope for the people in the Middle East into actually, uh, into actually achieving liberation and achieving, uh, ach achieving change, uh, change within the country. Because uh, here it's, it's not a question of uh, legacy to say that our fight basically against 
for, uh, against the dictatorships in the Middle East is basically the same fight against imperialism and the same fight against capitalism and, uh, and uh, globalization as a whole. Because globalization is actually what built the, 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 these dictatorships and it, it is globalization what actually built wars and, uh, and, and created wars in the regions for the past 100 years and more. Really? If we want to talk about the Middle East today, we 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 should not we, you know, we should understand what what globalization is first. Globalization is basically the expansion of capital into different regions of the world, which are not uh, which are not developed equally to the cap capitalist uh, countries like uh, in in Europe or in the United States. This expansion comes in different means, either by military means or by economic means or by social means or by media or different methods. This is a, a case which we can see in the Middle East, which is on a daily basis. From the TV, TV programs we watch, from the schools, uh, from the school's curriculums, from uh, the, the kind of food that is eaten, the kind of products that you buy from the market, everything is globalized. Even if you walk in the streets, there's a, yeah, there, 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 there's a, there, there's a joke about if, if a foreigner wants to come to Lebanon and learn Arabic, he probably have he will probably have learned English and French before he learns Arabic. This is how globalized it is. It's not because people like to speak other languages, but because in, you go into school and you learn, uh, you learn all your scientific, all your scientific, all the courses either in French or in English. You go to uh, to, to a company to work, and you see that all the projects you have are with with uh, our international projects and uh, to, to to clientels which are not existent. So basically, you're not serving the local economy, you're basically serving the international and the regional economy in general. Uh, the same thing if, if you go all around, all around the Middle East, uh, the same thing in Saudi Arabia, where uh, they big, build big compounds for foreigners to live and, and, and there like that, and the local system of education, I think, is, 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 is thrown to pieces. If you go into different Gulf areas, the, 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 the teaching and the education system is basically all Americanized, all the curriculum are made by, Ameri by, by, uh, by American companies and by American firms, and you basically start, you learn American history before you learn the, the history of, of your region. While, uh, while the education system that serves for the poor and the local is very, is, is very bad and it's, it's, it's actually very, very devastating. Uh, the same thing if you uh, the, the, this this is the general impact of how globalization works. But to keep that uh, to keep these products coming in and uh, a big big uh, big firm big international firms benefiting from selling these products into this region, they need uh, they need um, the ruling regimes the regimes in these countries. At the same time, they need uh, guarantees that they can stay in. And this is how imperialism comes into the picture. How this is how war comes into the picture. How do you preserve economic in, uh, uh, American and European economic interests in the Middle East? You, f uh, you, you forge a war. When the Iraqi regime decided to keep the oil for themselves and trade it with the international community for food during the siege, although, I, although we know that the Saddam regime is, very, is a dictatorship and all of these things, but we also know that the Americans put him into power as well. Really? But once these once uh, once uh, they, they are not benefiting from these uh, from the, from these reserves and natural reserves, they launch the war and then privatize privatize the oil to guarantee that it keeps on pumping to uh, U.S. economy and the European economy. The same thing we see in the Gulf. Whenever the Gulf is threatened, they put more money and they put more investment into supporting the, the ruling regimes because these ruling regimes guarantee for American firms and global firms to, 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 stay, to stay within the region and at the same time crush any resistance that comes from the people against, against the state of the economy and the poverty in the region. The same thing in Egypt. To guarantee their existence, they, 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 they support the Egyptian regime in crushing its own, its own people and, and putting thousands and thousands of people in, in prisons and, torture, and torturing them. The same thing in Lebanon, the same thing in, pa in Palestine, the same thing everywhere in the Middle East. The, 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 the current status of the Middle East is a status of a very fragile equilibrium, of very fragile state or that, that might flip flip in one second into, into a whole out war or in another second into extreme poverty and things like that. But at the same time, you see a lot of social, social movements rising from, the, rising, rising from below 
from people themselves. We 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 saw in the past three years uh, workers workers uh, strikes in Egypt. We saw them in the Gulf. We saw them in Lebanon. We saw them in, in 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 Iraq. We saw them all around the Middle East. And the same thing, we saw different political movements resisting imperialism and resisting resisting war and calling for peace. At the same time, resisting the local rulers who support. The, the, the seek of, uh, of uh, Western and European countries to actually uh, create more wars and create more this, uh, uh, create, create more, uh, more, more, prob more problems more problems within the region. The issue, the issue here that, that, that puts us in a case that any fight for freedom is basically a fight for economic liberation and for uh, social liberation at the same time for national liberation and uh, driving out uh, the uh, 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 imperialism out of the region. The only the the the, the pe pe people in the Middle East are not are not basically they are raised within within a context of war. Anyone in Lebanon, uh, anyone in Lebanon who who was who was brought up in the 80s and even in the 70s does not does not find them terribly wrong to have a war or uh, or uh, things like that because some, it, it, people got accustomed to, accustomed to these things. Uh, when there is any any problem on the streets, we, you see in a, in a split of a second people running and staying in their houses because they know something something might happen. This state of permanent instability is basically driving people out. At the same time, also it's testing people's patience, pe people's patience. And at one point, this patience will break, and people will will have to revolt against the standing regimes and at the, at the same time at the standing Western and uh, European interest within the region, which at the same time requires the solidarity of the whole world to support uh, to, 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 to to support such such radical change in the, in, in the region. The main driving force behind the, the, the behind the, the the interest of the centers of power in the in the Middle East is basically its economic resources. The Middle East is basically the main reserve of oil, which is uh, of uh, of oil, which is the the main the main the main material used for production of energy, which can make uh, airplanes run or uh, cars run and factories and different institutions, uh, different uh, productive. Productive, uh, productive institutions and factories all around work. The the the, the necessity for the uh, Western and especially Western and European powers to control the Middle East is basically to see that they have the privilege in terms of production and to always have a status of dominance over world market. Without that, without that oil and without that uh, source, a big source of energy. The production process within this region will have to slow down and not be a dominant, fa the dominant factor in the world economy. That's why it's very essential for them to stay in the Middle East and to control the Middle East. That's why they paid loads of money to support regimes that support them. At the same time, they pay loads of money to support and to crush any possible resistance movement and to po any possible movement that rises from the ground against the local leaders and the local dictatorships and against imperialism as a whole. They pay billions and billions of dollars to keep the status quo as it is. In the last Lebanese elections, the, the, the money that was paid in the elections, it was more than the money paid for the Obama elections in the US, just to keep the balance of forces in favor of, uh, of uh, international powers and the cent main centers of power within the globalized economy of the world. Hello?